You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You can find us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. Let's read. Let's read. That's right. That is read. <laughs> that's a, right. You are. Read you are, Ryan. <laughs> and we want you guys to help us keep the conversation going. You can do that by supporting the show. You can help us share it online with your friends and family. Leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a couple of links right there in the description so you can do just that. The verse of the day today is coming to you from 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 9. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go up and tell the king's household. Bro, you got to celebrate the wins, man. You got to celebrate the wins. Yeah. There's a lot of times where, you know, what do you think we do when we come together to worship? We praise God for who he is, but we we also praise him for what he's done in our life. There's one of those songs that I love uh, that just it just never gets old. The uh, he's done great things, mm-hmm. you know that one. Mm-hmm. That's one of the truest statements I've ever uh, heard in my entire life. God has done great things in our lives. So yeah, how can I keep silent about something like that? Yeah, this is a story from Elisha's life when the Syrians flee before God's people. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it moves the people to response. It, when God does something for you, when God shows up, it's not just like, oh, wow, thanks God. Oh, you hey, go, appreciate you go that. about your life. No, your worship and your response and your gratitude to what God has done in your life can inspire that in other people. That's and true. that's the example that we ought to be setting as believers. That's true, 100%. And we want you guys to remain fixed in God's word. The very best way for you guys to be able to do that, number one, is to read the word, but it's made easier with the Date the Word app. They're a partial sponsor of today's show. You can download it for free right now on iPhone or Android. Every single day connects today's date to God's word with the hope of making it more memorable to you. That's right. Thank you to Date the Word for sponsoring the show. I had something happen to me today that I hadn't had happen in a long time Mm -hmm. that I didn't realize I hated. Okay. I... (laughs) <laughs> I was talking to someone is this, this morning. Is this grapevine? Um, yeah, yeah. It, okay. It's an unofficial grapevine. I didn't okay. plan for it to be a grapevine, but welcome to the grapevine. Boink. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. There's a lot of people who, like, you can tell they just don't want to be talking to you. Sure. Right? But then there's people who are, like, going above and beyond to make sure that we're engaged. I'm actively listening. And what they do is they'll say your name in the conversation to let you know they're tracking with you, but oh, then they do ew. it way too much. Yeah. And it feels oddly aggressive. <laughs> I understand like, that. Like, 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 I don't ever say your name. Like, I don't ever, like, unless I'm trying to get your attention from across the room, like, yeah. hey, Ryan. But I'm like, you know, Ryan, let me talk to you about something. I really love the way you, that you did this, Ryan, over here. And one of the things that I think, are you with me, Ryan? One of the things that I did, like, once you start to hear your name so much, you're like, what? What yeah, is this? What? What, do you, what is the point of this conversation? <laughs> yeah, I had someone just talking to me, and they were like, "And John, I'm gonna tell you something, brother." Blah 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 blah. This was happening, but anyway, John, man, that that was that was really cool. And I was yeah. like, "You're you're putting it in weird places, and now I'm kind of weirdly off balance." Right? Yeah, I'm thrown here. It's a tactic. Like the more you use a person's name in conversation, especially when you meet them for the first time, mm-hmm. it's gonna cement it in your head. But it is off putting for like the, per- the person on the receiving end. Yeah, especially this is not a stranger. I've yeah. known this guy. I've known this guy for years. Oh, Years oh, yeah, and years and good. years. I don't like that. Like, like, I mean, even if I'm talking like, hey, uh, what's going on, David? It's good to see you, man. Like, what if I walked in and I was like, good morning, David? Wouldn't you be like, yeah, that's the way you don't like that? <laughs> you I, don't like, like that. I don't like that. Like, I, even I come in like, hey, what's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? But for me to come in and be like, good morning, Ryan. Good morning, yeah. Nicholas. Yeah, that's what, weird. What is this? Good morning, John. How you doing today, John? I just don't, yeah. Hey, John, I'm going to tell you what. When, uh, when you when you walked in the door, John, and, and you, you started talking about this, John, I got to tell you. Like, Can I tell you? Can I, I tell you like what that. it makes me think of? It makes me think of a, of a car salesman. Yep. A car salesman trying way too hard. Yeah. <laughs> that forced pleasantry, that forced connection. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't like I get people's name wrong on purpose sometimes, just so I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> just keep them on their toes. Never let them know your next move. Yeah, just never let them know. Like, what's going on, Frank? It's like, I'm Julia. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, just joking. But I mean, I don't know. That's that's one of my gripes. I don't like it when people use my name too much in in conversation. I'm it's, with you. It's it's a little yeah. aggressive. Yeah, it's a little like aggressive. It. Yeah, I don't like that's it. weird. Write and let us know if you ever had that experience, or maybe you're one of those perpetrators that you overuse a person's name in conversation. It don't if, make you look friendly. If you do, give us the motivation or the reasoning behind. Yeah, why you doing do that? that? It's probably like some. Uh, oh, what's that guy? I can't. I'll ask Dr. Shaw. Yeah. Dr. Shaw knows it. Uh, write in and let us know, 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. 
Hello, Clearview family. I'm Nicole. And I'm David. And we want to talk to you today about the Clearview app. You know, there are so many churches out there that put their sermons on YouTube and their announcements on Facebook and their prayer list on Periscope. I didn't even know Periscope was still functional. Oh, it's not. And that's why nobody can find their church's prayer list and nobody's prayers be getting answered. But here at Clearview, we believe in making our content as accessible as possible. That's right. Clearview produces so much content every single week, including Dr. Shaw's sermons, original music, a full online store, weekly prayer gatherings, and so much more. Not to mention the number one best-selling Christian talk show of all time. I don't know if that's accurate. Well, maybe not yet, but that's why we want people to download the app. If you're listening from the Triangle area, we encourage you to check out Clearview Church in person. But if not, you can still follow all of our content on the Clearview app. It's 100% free on the Apple Store and Google Play Store. And best of all, all of our content is right there in one convenient spot. Make sure you download the Clearview app today, and let's get back to the show. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. That's right. We're here live in the Clearview Today studio with Dr. Abaddon Shah, who is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website. That's abaddonshah.com. Dr. Shaw, we were talking about this in the intro today, and I'm going to do something that I never do, never do. Work. I've worked for Dr. Shaw for 10 years now, probably never done this, but I'm going to do it just today, okay. which is, I'm going to use your first name. Okay. Do you find it weird? We talked about this in the, in the intro. Do you find it weird or oddly confrontational when people just use your name in conversation? <laughs> and I don't mean like <laughs> Abaddon versus Dr. Shaw. If we're talking and I was like, Ryan, take a look at this. That feels odd. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. We were talking about this a little bit. It does feel. Doesn't that feel odd? It Ryan? does feel weird. Yeah. Okay. Now, 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 it's starting to feel odd. That's right. <laughs> if I was like, if I was like, the and first I, one wasn't that bad, but the second one, I was like, mm, okay. Yeah. I mean, that feels odd, Ryan. <laughs> All right. Now, now see I'm what done. I'm saying. <laughs> now I'm done. So, so <laughs> three is right out. You gave so me. So you're a, not you're not going like Abaddon Shah or Abaddon versus Doctor Shah or Pastor Shah. No, you're not about that. Just, just saying someone the name. using your name, Abaddon. Yeah, it odd? seems seems aggressive. Yes. Yeah. So so John, what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> yeah, is, exactly. <laughs> there's a book. There's a book. The I can't remember the author's name. It's like how to win f- friends and influence people. Dale Carnegie. He, and he says that he's like use people's names because it's like they know that you care and they know that you're connecting with them. I'm like I don't like it. <laughs> but I think it's more the tone. Yeah. I guess so. It's more like hi, John. I feel like a used car salesman. Like, but let me tell you what I'm gonna do here, man. It's like or or Ryan Ryan Ryan. Yeah. Here's here's what we're gonna do, Ryan. Okay. It's like, oh wow, this guy's my friend. Yeah. He's like, Ryan, what you're gonna wanna do is I'm gonna put you down for uh zero percent APR financing. Okay, yeah. Ryan, you good with that? A little bit is okay, but that in rapid succession is like, oh, I don't like I that. hate it. I, I don't, don't like, like it when so people you it feels yeah. it feels <laughs> aggressive. Yeah. And it's also yeah. kind of like almost like you're trying to be too close. Yes. yes. And we're not that close. We're not that close, Abaddon. Yeah. We don't do that. <laughs> I have people doing that. <laughs> uh, people do that to me. Not so some people do it just to check to see how I will respond to uh-huh. the not saying doctor or not saying pastor. And sometimes it's like, really? Yeah. You, you're testing uh, me? Okay. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I yeah. don't. I, well, so my rule for myself, and I think it's a good rule, is, is anytime someone's a pastor, you at least give them pastor first name. Yes. Right. I don't do pastor Abaddon. I do, I do pastor Shah. And then when you get doctor, doctor Shah. Dr. Shah. Yeah. Um, in per, but even in personal relate, like if I'm if I'm talking to people, you mm-hmm. know, you you reference Doctor Shaw. But even if it's just us being friends, you yeah. still get Pastor Shaw because right. you're a pastor. It all comes down to where people come from. You know, we talked about yeah. that at lunch today. It depends on where they come from. True. So, like in America, if people are coming from, say, more uh, the Massachusetts side of things mm-hmm. and more of the Puritan background, where it was almost congregational type Mm -hmm. churches where we're all equal in this Mm -hmm. and you know and so you're no better than i am (laughs) so there will be a more of the i'll address you by your name because i'm making a point here yeah Mm -hmm. i got something to prove i want to let you know yeah when you get more to the um you know the chesapeake bay colonies type people the Mm -hmm. virginia side or north carolina even south carolina where they 
now South Carolina you're getting a little bit closer to Georgia at this point, but there it's more Anglican type people, mm -hmm. so they respect the clergy. So yeah. they will say Dr. Shaw. Mm -hmm. You know, this is Dr. Shaw, or this is Pastor, this is Reverend Shaw. Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. it's like so they they're keeping a differentiation between laity versus clergy, mm -hmm. and I think it's a good thing. But I don't feel superior in that moment. I just feel like, okay, you're respecting the office. Yeah, yeah that's how I feel. Like it's 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 not a that the person is holier or separated. It's that's a respect thing. It's the office. Not everybody yeah. is a pastor. And right. so if someone it's just like not everyone is a doctor. So right. if you've achieved it, if you've earned it, or if you're if God has placed you there, then you acknowledge it. Right. You yeah. recognize it. I've even even pastors that I don't like or don't agree with, you would still I would still say like that's pastor. Yeah. John or yeah. Pastor Michael right. or Pastor somebody. Like if I was in a setting, like if I was reading a paper, then you don't say doctor, whatever. You just you just say the name and move on. Mm -hmm. But if I was in a setting where I was talking about them mm -hmm. and they happened to be there, I wouldn't just say that. Mm -hmm. Even Ehrman, Bart Ehrman, okay, he has a he has a doctorate. He mm -hmm. has a PhD from Princeton. I don't agree with him. Mm -hmm. I, I think his theology is off. I think his agenda is messed up. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, but if he was there. And there were students talking. I wouldn't say, but Ehrman says, mm -hmm. or Bart says yeah, this. Yeah, well, Bart says. <laughs> Bart, Bart says this. I've, heard, I've heard people do that. And I'm like, um, I don't think you should. Yeah. I would say, well, let me tell you this. Where I disagree with Dr. Ehrman is this. Mm -hmm. Whether he addresses me back yeah. the same way or not, yeah. that's up to him. But see, that's a classy response. Like, yeah. You're still referring to him with that respect. Even yeah. though you disagree, even though like, I yeah. mean, your positions are on opposing sides, mm -hmm. this is Dr. Ehrman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's so. that's how I that's <laughs> yeah. how I am. I just think it's and, and it's it's weird. It's somehow the formality of it makes it more not passive, but makes it less aggressive. Yeah. But I don't know what it is. It's odd to speak that way, but so as you were talking, it made me think of like people who are like <laughs> Father God, we just come to you today, Father God, and, and Father oh God, we just ask Father God gracious. that you would, Father God, be in the midst of this, Father God, and Father God, we just, like, God knows I you're think, still talking to him. I think it's a rhythmic <laughs> thing. People just, you know, because they don't see God there, mm -hmm. so talking to him like we're having a conversation is very difficult. Mm -hmm. So they get into this rhythmic um, tone or speech pattern where it seems like okay this is prayer this is what mm -hmm. prayer is supposed to sound right. like <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean it's it's okay i i it's different yeah, yeah. i know some people who do that yeah he's saying and that's that's i guess love you <laughs> yeah well, well ryan it's really great that you <laughs> it's really ryan, great i that, tell you what ryan i gotta john, tell, let me tell you john like, i really appreciate <laughs> you brought that up john <laughs> it's great that you brought up prayer because that's where we kind of left off on the conversation yesterday well i did that intentionally oh very so, nice man and i just kind of shined a big spotlight on you your did segue. but that's okay a little peek behind the curtain <laughs> <laughs> i think we have a i think we because we're talking about rhythms i think our rhythm is you work really hard to make the bridge organic and then i shine like the bat signal on it <laughs> right <laughs> yes and that's accurate that's, hey everybody ryan just made the segue check and out that then there's a reference. problem because i end up taking the last story and run <laughs> off with it and they're like sitting going well is somebody gonna chase that dog and bring it back speaking, back speaking of women who you used to work with that have garlic breath you know god gives us a wait sweet a minute, wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> oh you weren't here for that that was last week he was talking about a woman that he worked with it uh no you oh. were here for that oh yeah, you were yeah, here. yeah. we I talked about the that. great garlic i do remember and that. i could see in, the, in their eyes like well we tried <laughs> Ryan's good just, at it. I'm not gonna lie. Like, calculations just spinning, like trying when to make you were, things connect. When you were gone, I think there was one of the episodes where you were gone, where I was like, "All right, let's jump in." <laughs> I was like, "I got nothing." So it's funny that you said, and I don't want to take too much time away from nothing. the episode. But there's a game that we play, and one of our opening segments for our Sunday night youth uh, experience. Pick it up and preach. It's called Pick It Up and yeah, Preach. Yeah, it's a great one. So it's a it's a viral game. It's everywhere. It's okay. not just it's not unique to us. But it's they called what? Pick, up, pick it up and preach. Pick it up and preach. Mm -hmm. So they get okay. a random item. And they have 30 seconds like to come pen. up with an object lesson. Like, here's like an extempore brainy right, Exactly. So here's okay. this pen, right? I'm looking at this pen. Use this pen to write things down. Just like God is still writing your story. This pen Ooh. has ink in it. <laughs> just like there are chapters left in your story. So God's not done writing your story. Yeah. Trust him to finish. Uh, Do the coaster. Like the, Do the coaster. coaster. The coaster protects the table from the condensation from the from the mug, much like God protects us from the storms in our lives. Mm. The storm's going to come. <laughs> the condensation's going to fall no matter what. Yeah. But the coaster is there yeah. to protect us. Yeah. 
This is a cowboy. And listen, yeah, the cowboy. The cowboy. The cowboy. The cowboy. All right, let's see the cowboy. Uh, so the cowboy is, uh, you know, he's standing strong. He's standing firm. Uh, he's 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 a statue. He's he's resolute. And you know, if we are built up upon the word of God, uh, we're going to yeah, be good firm. I give up. That's why we're he be does firm the segues. Like uh, <laughs> we're going to be firm, like this cowboy is. Wow. That, that's why he does. The so, they, that's right. He's the man. Right. Tried, the man. They tried to stump me with that on the on the trip, and I was like knocking him out one yeah. after the <laughs> other. And they were like, "Man, you're really good at that." I was yeah. like. Youth, youth ministry for ten years. That's old. right. You gotta <laughs> go with it. You'll be able to debrief anything. That's right. You've heard you've heard all the good good ones and yeah. all the stinky ones. That's too. right. That's right. But we are talking about prayer today. We're you know we began this on yesterday's episode and it's part of a larger series we've been talking about trying to find God's will for our lives. And yesterday we're talking about you know how do we determine how God guides us? How do we look to God for guidance in various seasons in life? So in light of that, Doctor Shaw, what's the encouragement for our listeners today? Well, we, yesterday I said you know God guides us. Talk to Him pray. Mm -hmm. Today, I want to pick up where I left off, which is when you pray, stop and listen. Mm -hmm. So take a moment, instead of finishing your prayer, Jesus name I pray, and then run off, or like Rebecca used to say. <laughs> G name pray man. G -name. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second. Where's the... the oh, I don't have it. What is it? G -name that was me. Yeah, so Rebecca is uh, Dr. Shah's daughter. When she would pray, she would end every prayer, G name pray men. <laughs> Which is in, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. <laughs> they used to saying it so fast. She would say it. And Jennifer. the thing is, she didn't pray fast. No. She would pray normal, like, God, just thank you for this lunch. Thank you for the work that we have to do today. Gene and Prayman. <laughs> and we finally and we finally got to messing with her about it and she was like what are you saying i was like what do you what did you say she was like i just ended the prayer g day pray men that was, g -day I, wanna, I, I wanna get a clear view today stay i want to i want to have merch that's that's just g -day a clear day pray men j e e n a e g day pray and then men, men. yep <laughs> Lots of <laughs> lots of apostrophes thrown in there. I don't know. She when she was ready to end a prayer, she was ready to end it oh, right then and there. Oh my goodness, Gina yes. Preman. <laughs> Gina Preman. Yep. So before you do the Gina <laughs> Preman, <laughs> I can't even say it right. Yeah. Stop and listen. That's right. Yeah. Stop and listen That's because right. God will answer you. Mm -hmm. And the Sunday after I talked about this, or the weekend after I talked about this, uh, several people came to me and said it actually works. Mm -hmm. It actually works. You can hear. God speaking to you mm -hmm. and it's in your spirit and it's not like hey here if you go down this road and under this tree you'll find a hidden treasure it's not like that mm -hmm. it's simply confirming his word mm -hmm. that's right some some promise some encouragement some truth some principle God confirms it that's and, right. and reminds you mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> I just want to let our listeners viewers know that when you take the time to sit and listen God does speak yep. mm -hmm. wait yep. he is speaking I, I love that so much because a lot of times what the trap I've fallen into and the trap a lot of Christians, I think, fall into is they think that my question, like my, my question is going to be answered directly. Hey, what you want? Yes, do it. No, don't do it. Yeah. But what you just said, I think, just unlocked something in my head where he's confirming his word. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, that devotion you just read is true. Yeah. Yes. And, and if it's so if it's true. You know where to take it from. You there. know your actions. Yeah. You know, you're, you're confused about exactly, this. Exactly. Yes. Or you're about to jump in on this or you're about to take this wrong road. Yeah. Don't you remember what you just read? Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, yeah. That, I mean, that's as bullseye as it gets mm -hmm. on that topic. And it's God who's yeah. telling, talking to you at that point. 100%. You know? 100%. Yeah. Without specific, like, here are the words that I am saying to you about the step right. that you need to take. Mm -hmm. But guidance can also be confirmed through other means. We talked about the Word of God being grounded, mm -hmm. prayer, uh, not just asking, but also listening. Mm -hmm. But then guidance can be confirmed through emotions, circumstances, and mature Christians. Mm -hmm. It can be confirmed. That's right. Um, of course, I'm not going to put stuff like dreams in there, because some people put dreams in there and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I've had people ask me, that, what do you think about that? You know, I had this dream. I don't negate that and say, oh, no, no, no dreams, no dreams. I'm like, okay, if it does line up with the Word of God mm -hmm. and it does come after 
God speaks to you, then maybe there's something to that, but it's mm-hmm. just going to be a secondary confirmation. Yeah, I always, I always found dreams funny. I think we've talked about this off mic before, where like you, you just imagine God like designing human beings, and He's like, what they're gonna do is they're gonna they're gonna go for about 12, 12, 16 hours, and then they need to lay down and sleep for like eight hours, mm-hmm. and they're just gonna vividly hallucinate. Mm. They're gonna just see stuff that is not there, and like the angels are like, but it's it's gonna mean something, right? Sometimes, yeah. Not often, Not, but sometimes, oh. yes. It's like... Yeah. I mean, I, I wow. dreamed last night, and I was like somewhere in Iran sharing the gospel. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> you wake up, you're like, I'm buying a plane ticket. Yeah, I'm not ready for... And, and it was not a good situation. It was like I had bad people following me around, mm-hmm. and I was like this one guy who was like just watching every move, and, 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 I, and then he and I was like at this one iconic historical site and I was trying to take a picture. He's like, I'll, I'll take a selfie. And I'm like, okay, you can take the picture. And the whole time I was thinking, like, please don't know, let no other text message come through that while he's taking the selfie. He'd be like, <laughs> praying for you, brother. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And I'm like, I please don't let that happen. Let that happen. <laughs> and then I woke up. I'm like, yeah. what was that? <laughs> so, but guidance can be confirmed to emotions, circumstances, and mature Christians. So let's talk about emotions for a moment. Many times people trust in their own emotions, whether it's good or bad, to discern God's voice. And they will say something like, I have an uneasy feeling about it. Mm. Uh, or they'll say, I have a check in my spirit. If you're, yeah, a, if you're a Christian, you're, you had a check in your spirit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, or I have a good feeling about it. Mm-hmm. Or I have peace about it. Or if like you just got onto the Death Star for the first time, you yeah. got to say, I have got a bad feeling about this. Right. Oh, I was going to yeah. say, I have a hiccup in my giddy up. <laughs> what? Let's move on. <laughs> Hold on one hiccup second. Hiccup in my like, giddy like up. I have a bad feeling about it. I have a hiccup in my giddy up. Bruh. You ever heard that? <laughs> like the, no. Oh, well. No. Maybe that's just me. That's a South Carolina <laughs> thing. a South Carolina thing. <laughs> my South Carolina came out. I have a hiccup in my giddy up. Wow. Well, I, I was coming in with a Star Wars reference, and and, and now it just. A giddy yeah, up. Just Sorry. Absolutely yeah. didn't. Like a little. That was kind of crazy. <laughs> but I've definitely heard I've got a check in my spirit. At that moment, at that moment, brother, I just yeah, felt I've a check, check in my, in my spirit. spirit. And it's like, wow, I, I better listen to you. But the thing is, if you're not grounded in prayer, uh, a word of God, and you're not grounded, uh, you're not r- praying, and if you're not in those places where God want, is, is going to speak to you, what's going to happen is you're going to take that, whatever that, um, <laughs> you put a GNA frame in and send it to me. <laughs> I, I saw it too, but I, I was going to ignore was gonna it. Give me some uh, scripture. David, David, David uh, sent, so we've got, a, we've got a text thread where we can kind of, communicate back and forth during the show and David sent a graphic <laughs> that honestly could go in the store it's praying G-nay hands pray men. and it says g nay pray men <laughs> oh and men needs to be um m-i-n men yeah probably yeah because that's pray just men. the word men yeah, yeah g-nay, g-nay pray men, pray men. No, pray men. <laughs> so um <laughs> going back to emotions sometimes satan will give you emotions as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's true He'll give you a sense of false joy. He will work on your pride and tell you that you have the gift of discernment. Mm. And I've had that feeling at times, and I've acted on that feeling only to find out that had nothing to do with God. Mm. And you step on it thinking, oh, I, you, you know, you have this surge of boldness coming up and the, this sense of, I got this. Oh, I, mm, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. Just know at that moment you need to back down yeah. mm-hmm. and go and pray to God. That's right. Yeah. Because that's how Satan works. When you have this bubbling up over and you're just like ready, that's how Satan works. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, I would say to you, that may be the first telltale sign that Satan is giving you that emotion when you have a sense of this, this confidence come over you. Mm. It's got nothing to do with God. Yeah, true. That's a great Because he point. works with pride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But true discernment, that emotion comes, if, if it's God, it, it brings a sense of humility. Mm-hmm. It brings a sub- sense of submission to God. Yep. It brings a sense of dependence upon him and his power. Mm-hmm. So if that's not happening and it's you with the radar going, ready to take on the, 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 the false prophets and take on... Mm, yeah. Maybe it's not nothing yeah, to do with God. Yeah, maybe buddy. you need to watch out. Satan just put a little drop of his poison into you. Mm. And you made a good point, too, because you said yesterday on yesterday's episode, well, the pastor, uh, Baxter, who said your emotions are really shallow and God doesn't like to work yeah. there, 
Satan loves to work there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's Absolutely. Where, that's, that's the one place he's going to work. He will work there way more often than God will. Yeah. And he will get you to feel sorry for yourself or, you know, uh, get you to get angry or fearful or discouraged. Don't make decisions in the middle of good emotions or bad emotions. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Good yeah. point. And sometimes people discount emotions completely. And that's not what we're saying here. Emotions are like a flood. Mm-hmm. Okay. Emotions are like a flood. They can either destroy or clean everything. God sent emotions can actually flood away the crud of life. Hmm. So when you are in a situation where uh, there is something off between me and you, okay, and and we're talking and and uh, we're, you know we have prayed and we have read God's word and we know there's a reconciliation needed. And that <clears throat> sense of emotion comes, and this emotion may have a little bit of nostalgia of our friendship mm-hmm. from the past and where we were, or it may have a sense of humility that, you know, God put us together, mm-hmm. and it may have a sense of um, hope for the future, that we are working towards something big. That emotion now comes as a flood, and it washes away that hurt feeling between us. Good point. And yeah. we go, you know... Hey, look, I'm sorry. I was that was dumb of me. I don't know why I talked like that. I don't know why I said what I said, but it was foolish. Mm. And at that moment, your emotions begin to match mine because they're also being sent by God. And a sense of humility comes over as well, where it's more of a you got nothing to apologize. I messed up there because I should have known better. I don't know why I was saying what I say I said or why I said what I said, but it was it was please, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. See, this was not a check in my spirit or I got a good feeling about it. Mm-hmm. This was more of a God sent emotion that helped you overcome whatever the enemy was doing or whatever the sinful world creates mm-hmm. or my selfishness had had distorted. It 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 washed it away. It happens a lot in marriage. Mm-hmm. You can sit there and say, well you did this and I did this. Now let's let's and I've done that, you've done that, we've all mm-hmm. done that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it works, but it's it's never ends up in a good place. Yeah, right? you're just guaranteed to have that conversation a little again someday. Right. Yeah. yeah. But in the word, prayer, those emotions sent by God, if they're really coming from God, it, they bring a sense of humility. They also bring a sense of empathy mm-hmm. that I can, I, I know where you were coming from. I, I, sh- I know you had a rough day and I get it. Or I, have, I was having a rough day and I'm sorry. That was, anyways, you want to go cook something or you want to go watch a movie you want to go just relax yeah and talk what happened there those emotions sent by god mm-hmm. confirmed that hey we need to restore this relationship yeah you see the cheap route of i have a check in my spirit or i have a bad feeling about it or a good feeling those are just poor substitutes that I think many times Satan is behind them. I, I think that's you're a, 100% right. That's a great example. And then you can tell the po- the difference in posture but behind them. is like, yeah. I have this, or I am this, or I'm feeling this, versus like, you know, in humility, re- approaching the person and be like, hey, I'm I'm sorry. I, that, that humility, that that gentle spirit is that's from God. being yeah. washed <laughs> away. It's, it's much more different in its approach. Well, that check in your spirit it only leads to confrontation, which right. ultimately is for me. Yeah. But with with God, your emotions aren't for you. They're for right. they're the people in your life right. that right. that love. Right. You know. So so when that you know, your chest begins to swell up and you feel like you have this radar straight from the throne of God. <laughs> Gabriel <laughs> dropped off this morning. <laughs> maybe stop and go, maybe it's got nothing to do with Gabriel. It probably has something to do with Lucifer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah? I think so. Good feeling or bad feeling. Mm-hmm. So keep that in mind. Circumstances, they can also be used to confirm the will of God mm-hmm. uh, where we learn to connect the dots and see God's handiwork. Mm-hmm. It happened this way, and then God did this, and then God did that. And look how God worked this out. That's right. It's not just that, hey, this happened, and that happened, and then I did this, and then this happened. Mm-hmm. It's all about you. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's also seeing the cause of it. I think you're right, because even when you write, like one of the things that, that we do, like when we write our books, it's never this happened, then this happened, and right. this happened. Yep. It's always this happened, therefore this, therefore this. And so yep. you see that God, when, when you put those dots together right. you see how he's worked in the past then you see he's doing it now it becomes easier to recognize yeah yeah a good test of whether your emotions or circumstances are coming from god 
is how do you view God in 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 that discernment process? Or is God even there? Mm-hmm. If it's just you, then it's I would probably say ninety nine point nine percent or even a hundred percent it's it's the enemy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's manipulating you? Mm-hmm. That's a good but point. if it leads you to a place of humility and submission to the living, true triune God, then those emotions can be used. Those circumstances can be used. That's why the dream thing. How do? How can I know for sure if that dream is even from God? Right. <laughs> Unless at the end of that dream, there's a sense of submission mm-hmm. to God's plan and God's sovereignty and God's goodness in my life. If that it, if it brings that, then I can say yes. I mean, go back and look at every dream. Mm-hmm. Dreams in the Bible. Mm-hmm. When Joseph had the dream, uh, um, that dream was about the plan of God. His brothers didn't understand. Mm-hmm. It was the plan of God that one day everybody's going to bow before him, and of course it happened. And and Joseph was not like I am the one. He was more of a no God. You meant it for evil. God meant it for good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, go down the road and you see other dreams that that people had in scripture like Paul mm-hmm. um, I'm sorry Peter sitting up um, in Joppa mm-hmm. on, the, on the upper uh, in a, on the rooftop mm-hmm. and the 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 big sheet comes down from heaven with clean and unclean animals Peter rise up kill and eat that whole dream was supposed to help them go and throw the doors open to the Gentiles right I mean it's a very different perspective very yeah. much so. So how do I know that my dream is really confirming? I mean, it comes down to how is God's purpose being fulfilled? Exactly. I think I think a lot of times Christians don't want to admit that there's just nonsense sometimes. Some things in our life just don't make sense. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like it's almost, I, and maybe not all Christians, but a lot of them I feel like they're like, well, this has to mean something. Everything in life has to mean something because God wouldn't just give me nonsense dreams. Yeah. But I've had nonsense dreams, dude. I've I've I, I have had some really like dreams where I'm like, yeah. Sometimes it's just sometimes it's just something you ate and it. I've had dreams where like all of metabolism. us were like in Mario Kart, not playing it, but like in it. Like really? we're driving yeah. the cars. For me to wake up and be like, what could this mean? Yeah. yeah we got it's like all together in this <laughs> yeah. new journey with, uh, we're going to do great things for the Lord. The, right? and, the, and there's going to be red shells along the way. There's going to be yeah. We know peels. there's going to be banana peels. There's going to be blue shells. But at the mm-hmm. end of the day, that mushroom cup is waiting for us on That's the other watch. side. Sweet Beulah land. <laughs> watch out for the Donkey Kong and the Wario, <laughs> Wario type people. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. very nice. <laughs> There's that sound effect. There it is. Very nice. Well done. Well, yeah. Just to say, folks, that it has nothing to do with God's will. Yeah. Very much. It's just that John was up late playing. I was Mario playing Kart. Mario Kart with my son. <laughs> just That's what happened in the subconscious. <laughs> no, but discussions like this are helpful because it helps yeah. us think about you know the emotions that we experience, circumstances, the dream, even the dreams that we have, and how to interpret them rightly based on God's word. Very much. Today was helpful for you. Write in and let us know, 252-582-5028. Or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. Don't forget, on that same website, you can partner with us financially. Every gift that you give goes not only to building up this radio show, but countless other ministries for the gospel of Jesus. More great discussion coming your way the rest of this week. Make sure you guys tune in. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.